views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Mission BX. Mission BX is a collaboration between BronxNet and the Center for Bronx Nonprofits at Hostos Community College, and I'm your host, Eileen Newman. Today, we're here in Yolanda Garcia Park, and we're going to be meeting with community members and the executive director of Nos Cadamos, and they're responsible with the community for this beautiful environment. So we'll be meeting with Jessica Clemente, and we'll be talking to people who are enjoying the park. Stick around, and we'll be back in a minute. Hi everyone, I'm here with Jessica Clemente, the Executive Director of the wonderful organization Nos Cadamos. So we're going to learn about this beautiful park that we're sitting in and also about Nos Cadamos and what the background story is, which is an exciting adventure. Yes. So Jessica, where are we? What is this? So we're in the Yolanda Garcia, what well, we wanted to call Memorial Park, but it's the Yolanda Garcia Park celebrating our founder, Yolanda Garcia. Um, this once barren space has now been transformed to a lively, active, functional space that can be shared by both seniors and, and young people and children alike, which is one of our uh, important pieces to say, you know, a lot of playgrounds have been pretty much geared towards one type of group or user. And here we wanted to make sure that there was a good balance so that there's many uses that could take place here. And it was over $6 million in investment. I don't know if I added that part, but it's a pretty substantial commitment that was made on the Parks Department and our local city council person, Salamanca, to ensure that this can actually come to fruition. Um, this park has been in the plan. I was going to ask, how long? The park has been in the making as far as the vision from the day Nos Caramos was inception, incepted. Um, How long ago? So we're going 25 years, right? So when the Melrose Urban Renewal Plan was first proposed for this community, when pretty much the disinvestment, right, through the fires and through the city's bankruptcy, there was really no commitment for communities of color specifically or investment in communities of color at that time. Um, a large population had been displaced. Those that remained were here long enough to hear about the city's top-down plan to reinvest and revitalize, and certainly it didn't include them. And so our name, We Stay, Nos Quedamos, is in principle about our commitment to staying in our community, being at the table when decisions are made, and actually envisioning how that should look, because we feel that's the most sustainable, and then being active players in that development. So the vision here in Melrose, which is a 35 block coverage of the footprint, that goes from Park Avenue all the way to Brook Avenue to 163rd, all the way down to close to 149th Street. So it's pretty substantial footprint. Yeah. Um, was about protecting and keeping open space because of the environmental health issues that we fight in our community. Right. Um, we're looking at affordable housing that's mixed affordable housing. So you have affordable home ownership, and you see here kind of blanketed on both sides of the park are our affordable homeowners uh, buildings that we supported and, and developed, um, affordable rental. And is this yours? No, this is a senior building, ah. um, which was a part of having housing for seniors as okay. well. So um, that makeup was really important. Walkable streets was also very important to keep our community safe, but also um, easily accessible. Mixed-use housing was also really important, and at the time it was, it was pretty innovative to even come up uh, to the table with. And of course, you know, it was it was really um, not as welcomed by the city, right? Like any right. any proposal that was prepared and fronted by the community, Joe and Jane Public was not accepted as a real plausible plan. So um, mixed so use, and as you can see now, right, hence yeah. mixed use housing with the commercial on the lower level and residential on the top is the practice here in New York City. And I give a lot of that credit to the folks around the table um, who helped prepare and shape the plan. 
as part of North Carolina's vision. So this has been around for 25 years, yes. but Jessica, you had to have been like in elementary school <laughs> in 25 years. So how did, you, how did you get involved? My segue into the work with Nos Quedamos and into this work in general was after college. I grew up in Mount Haven in Millbrook Houses on 138th Street and 37th Street in St. Anne's. And so firsthand I know what it is to feel bombarded and impacted by land use and decisions like locating waste transfer stations in our community and having suffered from asthma directly as a child and, and still even as an adult I suffer from asthma. So having already that, that knowledge and that experience, I came across a job description um, that was fronted by Nos Quedamos actually on a public health study that was being uh, funded by Congressman Serrano to look at the effects of asthma and then look at the waste transfer stations or the siting of waste transfer stations and the diesel truck traffic in our community. And, and from a participatory standpoint, it was innovative because it actually included community groups that were on the ground, really designing and directing how that study took take place. Um, it was really to combat um, decisions around site locations for air quality Monitors. At that time, it was on rooftop levels, not at um, ground level where the most exposure was. So for me, getting out of college, I thought that somehow I had to save the world. I'm an environmental science major. Um, and so I thought I had to save the world somewhere else. This position and this opportunity told me in a lot of ways that I could save the world in my own community. And so it was very empowering. And it affected me a great deal having to meet and work with Yolanda once I was hired, right? Uh. And, and so she opened the door. And, and really, that chapter of my life that understood the cross section between public health, land use, and organizing and bringing community power to the forefront. And so we don't have to feel disconnected in a way where we're disenfranchised. Like the fact of the matter is, what Nos Quedamos accomplished 25 years ago through the Melrose Urban Renewal Plan, which was a community-led effort that was adopted into city charter, which was unprecedented at the time, is success can happen when community is banded together, regardless of whether they know the odds. And the odds are always against us, frankly. And so knowing that you have an uphill battle, but you still have the tenacity and you still have the perseverance to push forward, is what it takes to get change done, transformative change done in our community, and I'm all for that. So that got me in the door when it came to me to help support the organization on an organizational front. I felt the obligation and the commitment and the pride, frankly, to be able to be asked to be asked to support in that role and help recover the organization and move the organization forward. And I said, if not me, then who and why not me? Right? And so these last eight years have been an uphill battle. Yeah. Somewhat like what we started right. <laughs> 25 years ago. Right. And um, each day we get closer and closer to really um, bringing full vision to the plan that was set out. This park being one of them. I was going to say. The work we is... do with our community gardeners and organizing the community gardeners that are in this footprint, of which there are 12. Um, really looking at how do we band together the stakeholders so that when it comes to policy and decision making, um, we're present. I have a colleague of mine, a mentor, and someone I have a lot of respect for, Eddie Bautista, who's the ED of the New York City Environmental Justice Alliance, said to me once, and this phrase has always stayed with me, if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. And it's it's a great yeah, it's a it's great true. line it's because true. our communities are always on the chopping block right. right and are always being impacted in ways that we feel like oh we can't do anything about but the fact is we can and, and this you, is a and testament you proved it. right both locally um citywide statewide and on, nationally and internationally i mean communities are suffering from displacement and gentrification, and it's not just here in New York, and it's just not here in the Bronx. I was in Berlin last year sharing about our experience and, and how what we've done here in Melrose as a community-led effort of real community planning, right, is a model. And I'm sorry we need to take a I break. Know. Oh, but, that, but thank you for all of that. Thank I feel you. like, so when are you running for, <laughs> for office? So we'll be back after the break. Thank you.
So welcome back. We're here with a member of the community who's here with his adorable son. So this is Kareem Michael, and we just happened upon Kareem and... Kayan. Kayan. <laughs> and hi. they're enjoying the park. So, so you have lived in the neighborhood for... A few short years. A yeah. few short years. I'm not, I'm not a long-time resident, but my mother-in-law is. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what made you come into this particular community in the Bronx? Over the years, um, I've been seeing the development. I also saw this being developed. And uh, my mother-in-law mentioned that it was finished. And uh, we actually frequent uh, another park that's maybe three blocks away by the police station. Oh, okay. And uh, it's not as verdant, it's not as nice as this, so we figured, why not? And he loves it. He doesn't, he doesn't even want to go to the other park anymore. So how often do you come? Um, we've been coming here for two weeks now, um, just about every day. Wow. Yeah, that's every day. Very, right? That's, you like this park? That's lucky. Yeah, I guess he doesn't want to talk right No, now. he's not going to talk right now. But, this has, <laughs> but it has the best playground. It's, yeah. It's, so, it's just, there's something about it. It's very just, interactive. The kids love yeah. it. They love, you know, interacting with one another. You know, the other parks in the area, they're very, like, bland. They're not as, yeah, you know, colorful and interactive. So, yeah. And we just learned that this park took about six years from the initial concept of it to what actually... Really? What you're seeing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was six years and a lot of money from a lot of people who really wanted it to happen and wanted the community to have a place like this. So. Well, you know, I'm, I'm glad that they did it. You know, um, I've, I've never been the biggest fan of the Bronx, you know, being from Brooklyn. But, you know, now that I have family here, you know, it's it's good to see that, you know, people care about it and that they're making yeah. making things better here, you know. So do you see changes in the community since... Yeah. Because you, because right now it's it's like if you're here for four years, it's it's kind of different than it was four years ago. Right, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I've been seeing, uh, yeah, I've been seeing exponential changes, um, especially with the housing. Right. Um, so I think that factors into how you know people feel about how, you know where they live and whatever. So yeah, I've been seeing a lot of changes, yeah, for the better. So so are you happy about what? the move that you made or almost happy or it's a big a big difference it's a huge difference um i think that you know it's good to see that a lot of black and brown people are able to to get better quality housing and not be forced out or not have exactly. to apply to a lottery and you right. know because like i said i'm from brooklyn and in order to get halfway decent housing, you have to pay a crap load of money. And um, that's why I'm here. What, is that what made you make the move? Yeah, I got priced out. And I'm actually, before I make the big move down south, like the rest of, you know, most wow. black New Yorkers, because you go to Atlanta, there's nothing but Brooklyn people down there. I've never heard anyone say that before. Oh, yeah. I didn't oh, realize yeah. that. Yeah, you, go, you go anywhere from like northern Florida to like the bottom of like, Virginia, it is nothing You're but New York. You're going to see your old neighbors. Basically, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, you get more bang for your buck, you know, so I figured, you know, let me give this a try, save up a little money, and I'm glad I did, you know. It's, it's, the South Bronx is not as bad as Brooklyn people <laughs> what they, right. it used to be, no, you know what I mean? No, it's definitely no, no. better than what it used yeah. to be. Yeah, and it's, yeah. I mean, I think that the, the allure is that it's such a community. I mean, yeah. once you get in it, you see that people really care about it. Oh, absolutely. This, is, this, all of this is such an example. Mm -hmm. It's, um, it's just, there's a book called Bronx Stories that you should look, look at. Stories. And it's, and it's all about, it's about from the perspective of somebody who was running a nonprofit organization. She wrote the book, and she's looking at wh how this all got developed from oh, wow. rubble and how this all got built by the community. Wow. So yeah, so that's my my recommendation. But Bronx stories. Bronx stories. I'm yeah. looking into it. And definitely. thank you, thank you so much thank for you. spending time with us. My it pleasure. was good to meet you, Likewise. and it was good to meet you too. So nice to meet you. Nice. <laughs> oh, that was excellent. That was great. Thank you.
We built a media network for you. Bronxnet TV. Come learn in your new state-of-the-art studios at Lehman College. At Mercy College. And coming soon to the South Bronx in the Hub. Inspire with your stories, culture, history. Your Bronx on Bronxnet. Engage with us. Connect with us at your channels and at Bronxnet.tv. Learn. Engage. Inspire. Bronxnet TV. From the Bronx to the world. <laughs> Bronxnet. <laughs> Welcome back. So we've heard about the park and how it got developed. We've heard about Nos Kadamos. We've met some of the people in the park. Now let's look at a piece by Arlene Makoko about the 2018 Nos Kadamos Street Festival. It's the second annual Nos Quedamos We Are Melrose Street Festival, a celebration of a community once on the brink of extinction in the late 80s and early 90s that today, 25 years later, through the activism of the late founder Yolanda Garcia and her neighbors, saw the creation of 19 new buildings with 4,000 units of housing that make up Melrose Commons from 156th Street to 161st Street and from 3rd Avenue to Cortland, with several community gardens in between like this one. That's where we caught up with celebrity chef Ramon Perez from the Bronx Havana Cafe. I think it's, it's more important to start showing people how to cook healthy. It's really about bringing the community together. It's to pay homage to the legacy and to now open the door to what's to come. Hundreds gathered for the day-long event that included entertainment, all to celebrate a new chapter for Melrose Commons. Not only are they completing a building on 700 Manita Street in Hunts Point, the governor announced Melrose Commons as winners of two out of 12 downtown revitalization initiative projects that total 10 million for the entire South Bronx, which includes bringing broadband to this park. You don't have to be a, a, to, um, a planner or an architect. That community residents have a feel, strong feel and a sense of what's needed and can bring economic drive and opportunity. Compared to other areas, no, um, the Bronx has come out of troubled times. Um, and from what they've come out of, um, you see all of this wonderful art and culture that exists. Behind Anna Melendez, program officer at Nos Kedamos, are photographs and images chronicling the years of struggle, resistance, and ultimate victory, all reminders of what can be accomplished when all work together. Former president of the Bronx Overall Economic Development Corporation, Joe Ithier, came to celebrate, as did Peter Stand, an urban planner commissioned to draw up designs for the site. 65% of this area were vacant, garbage-strewn lots. Um, and, of course, over the years, because of the organizing of Nos Caramos and then working very closely with them, we were lucky enough to collaborate with them and become the architects of about a million square feet. And they had dreams and they had plans, and they were fighting the city planning commission and uh, HPD, all of that, all the city agencies, and I said, how can uh, I be of help? And today, look at this. We're celebrating all the work that the people did, the people who stayed and fought. The tables and nonprofits here evidence that this is a community that is changing with Nos Kedamos at the center, always working to provide the resources necessary to maintain and grow a strong community. I came here without speaking, as you know, Rwanda, that we don't speak English. A community that owns its own buildings, its own green spaces, and they have been able to control it and hold it for 25 years is an inspiration to all of us who try to save our communities. They've experienced huge success and they say that success is far from over. Now it's about engaging the community by hosting events just like this one that celebrate culture and neighborhoods. For BronxNet, this is Arlene Makoko. I'm sorry, that's all we have time for today. We would have liked to have spent more time here in Yolanda Garcia Park. But if you've missed a portion of the show, you can go to bronxnet.tv and click on Mission BX. You'll be able to see this show and other shows. And come back next month when we go to visit another wonderful Bronx nonprofit doing good work here in the community. Yeah, the